to to linger on the division between the static and the dynamic, so much of the work in computer vision, so many of the breakthroughs that you've been a part of have been in the static world, in the looking at static images. And then you've also worked on starting, but it's a much smaller degree, the community is looking at dynamic, at video, at dynamic scenes. And then there is robotic vision, which is dynamic, but also where you actually have a robot in the physical world interacting based on that vision. Which problem is harder? The, 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 the intuitive sort of the, the trivial first answer is, well, of course, one image is harder. But sort of if you look at a deeper question there, are we, um, what's the term, cutting ourselves at, cutting ourselves at the knees or like making the problem harder by focusing on Im images? That's a fair question. I think uh, sometimes we we can simplify a problem so much uh, that we essentially lose part of the juice that could enable us to solve the problem. And one could reasonably argue that to some extent this happens when we go from video to single images. Now, historically, uh, you have to consider the limits of um, imposed by the computation capabilities we had. So if we, many of the choices made in the computer vision community uh, through the 70s, 80s, 90s can be understood as choices which were forced upon us by the fact that we just didn't have access to compute enough compute not enough memory not enough hard drive not, exactly not enough com uh, not enough compute not enough storage so so think of these choices so one of the choices is focusing on single images rather than video okay S clear questions storage and compute uh, uh we had to focus on we did uh, we d used to detect edges and throw away the image Right, so you have an image which is say 256 by 256 pixels, and instead of keeping around the grayscale value, what we did was we detected edges, find the places where the brightness changes a lot. So now that's and now and then throw away the rest. So this was a major compression device, and the hope was that this makes it that you can still work with it. And the logic was humans can interpret a line drawing, and. Uh, uh, and uh, yes, and this will save us a computation. So many of the choices were dictated by that. I think uh, today uh, we are no longer detecting edges, right? We process images with convnets because we don't need to. We don't have that those compute restrictions anymore. Now, video is still understudied because video compute is still quite challenging if you are a university researcher. I think video computing is not so challenging if you are at Google or Facebook or Amazon. Still super challenging. I've uh, yes. just spoke with the VP of engineering, Google head of the YouTube search and discovery, and they still struggle doing stuff on video. It's very difficult except doing, except using techniques that are essentially the techniques you used in, in the 90s, some very yeah. basic computer vision techniques. Yeah. No, I, th that's when you want to do things at scale. So if uh, if you want right. to operate at the scale of all the content of YouTube, it's very challenging, and there are similar issues in Facebook. But as a researcher, you right. you have you have more uh, you know opportunities. You can train large you know networks with yeah. relatively large uh, video data sets. Yeah. Yes. So I think that th this is part of the reason why we have so emphasized static images. I think that this is changing, and over the next few years, I see a lot more progress happening in in video. So I I have this generic statement that uh, to me, video recognition feels like ten years behind object recognition, and you can quantify that because you can take some of the challenging video data sets and their performance on action classification is like say thirty percent, which is kind of what we used to have around uh, 2009 in object detection you know so it's like about 10 years behind and uh, whether it'll take 10 years to catch up is a different question hopefully it will take less than that let me ask a similar question i've already asked but once again so for dynamic scenes do you think 
Do you think some kind of injection of knowledge bases and reasoning is required to help improve like action recognition? Like if, 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 um, if we solve the general action recognition problem, what do you think the solution would look like? Is another way to yeah. put it. So I, I completely agree that knowledge is called for and that knowledge can be quite sophisticated. So the way I would say it is that perception blends into cognition and cognition brings in issues of memory and uh, uh, this notion of a schema from uh, psychology, which is, uh, let me use the classic example, which is uh, you go to a restaurant, right? Now the things that happen in a certain order, you walk in, somebody takes you to a table, a waiter comes, gives you a menu, takes the order, food arrives, eventually a, a bill arrives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, this is a classic example of AI from the 1970s. Uh, it was called, uh, there was the term frames and scripts and schemas. These are all quite similar ideas. Okay, and there, in the 70s, the way uh, the AI of the time dealt with it was by build, hand coding this. Right. So they hand coded in this notion of a script and the various stages and the actors and so on and so forth. And use that to interpret, for example, language. I mean, if there's a description of a, of a story involving some people eating at a restaurant, there are all these inferences you can make because you know what happens typically at a restaurant. So I think this kind of uh, this kind of knowledge is absolutely essential. So I think that when we are going to do long form video understanding, we are going to need to do this. I think the kinds of technology that we have right now with 3D convolutions over a couple of seconds of clip or video, it's very much tailored towards short term video understanding not that long-term understanding. Long-term understanding requires a notion of, uh, this notion of schemas that I talked about, perhaps some notions of goals, intentionality, functionality, and so on and so forth. Now, how will we bring that in? So we could either revert back to the 70s and say, okay, I'm going to hand code in a script, or we might try to learn it. So I tend to believe that we have to find learning ways of doing this because I think learning ways land up being more robust and there must be a learning version of the story because uh, children acquire a lot of this knowledge by uh, sort of just observation. So at no moment in a child's life does a, it's possible, but I think it's not so typical that somebody that a mother coaches a child through all the stages of what happens in a restaurant they just go as a family they 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 go to the restaurant they eat come back and the child goes through 10 such experiences and the child has has got a schema of what happens when you go to a restaurant so we somehow need to uh, we need to provide that capability to our systems 